Meta released Llama 3 model last week and since then lot of interesting things have been happening with this model and I have been covering those on my channel if you are interested. Today I stumbled upon couple of models which are fine tuned of Llama 3 by Gradient and then there were few others who have increased the context length of Llama 3 from its original 8K to 262K as in the case on your screen with this model and then there is another fine tuned version where this individual has increased the Llama 3's context length from 8K to 64K. When we say context length then it simply means that the amount of text the AI can uh, can pay attention to at once at one time like how much it can read or remember when it's working on a task. So in this video I'm going to explain in very simple words at a very high level as how these individuals or companies are increasing that context length. The secret sauce or the magic of increasing this context length is all about something called as rope theta. But don't worry about it. Let me try to explain it in very very simple word and I will also show you the pseudo code as how this is being done. So let me take you to a slide and then we will try to understand this phenomena. Let's suppose this is a simple raw text a paragraph which is being input to a model. Then let's suppose initially the context length of the model is just one. What it means is that model can pay attention to only one word or in other words token at one time. So you see in the second line I have um, put the blue color on this I. So let's suppose the spotlight of the model or the context length of the model is just one. So it is it can only read one word at a time and it can only remember that one word. Let's suppose the context length of the model is two. In that case now model can uh, remember or read two words or two tokens at one time. Let's see context length of model is three. Now model can read three words at one time. Let's try to understand then what exactly positional encoding is. Because without positional encoding all of this text which I have just shown you is simply a bag of random words for a transformer or model because model doesn't know which letter is coming first. We know that in I love you I comes first, love comes second and you comes third but not the model. In order to make sure that model is aware of the sequence of these uh, words or order of objects we use positional encoding. Positional encoding is done by mapping each position to a unique vector or a numerical um, representation. The output of positional encoding layer is a matrix as you can see here. For example, we have given the tag or vector 0 0.1, 0 0.2 which is a list or vector to i. Similarly, we have given 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 to love and we have given 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 to you. And now with the help of this, model knows that okay i comes first then comes love and then comes you so the input to the model would be the letter or the word plus its positional encoding as where exactly it fits in this is a very very basic example now the output of this positional encoding layer is matrix as you can already see here okay so now we know what positional encoding is Let's see what is rotary positional encoding. Now in positional encoding, there are different types. One of the most popular one is rope or rotary positional encoding. Rotary positional encoding or rope is a type of positional encoding or embedding that uses a rotation mechanism to encode the position of each element in a sequence. Let's only focus on I love you, which is our context length of this model. So if you look at here, what is happening here is that rope would encode each word's position by rotating a fixed vector. So we are not using different vector as was the case in the previous slide. We have just taken one vector point one, point 0.1 and point 0.2 
and then we will just specify the position of that word by a certain angle based on the position for example for i or position 1 the vector point 1 point 2 is rotated by 0 degrees which means no rotation for love or position 2 the vector point 1 point 2 is rotated by 90 degrees which is quarter turn for position for you position 3 the vector point 1 point 2 is rotated by 180 degree or half turn so the resulting vector will be for i it won't change for love it will change like this on 90 degrees and for u it will again change like minus 1.1 minus 0.2 will be rotated 180 degree so this is what rope is these encoded vectors are then used as input to the model which can now understand the position and relationship between the vectors in a sequence rope is a very simple and effective way to encode positional information and it is used very very widely so now we know that what exactly is happening here um, because not only this rope is uh, converting these vectors it is changing it but we can also ascertain that which vectors are together then comes the rope theta this is the crux of the matter where the contact length is increased so if you look at it you will see that rope theta is a parameter that controls that rotation angle in the rope encoding process think of it like a dial that adjusts how much the vector is rotated for each position if you give a smaller theta value such as only one degree then that means a small rotation so the encoded vectors will be similar for nearby position if you give it a larger theta such as 90 degree or 180 degree that means a big rotation so the encoded vectors will be very different for nearby positions so by adjusting theta you can control how much the model focuses on local or nearby or global far away relationship between elements in the sequence so the way these people or companies are increasing the context length they are increasing that rope theta value at a very very high level and simple words so for example if you look at this example what is happening here is that let's say we have adjust uh, with rope we have rotated a fixed vector say 0 0.1 0 0.2 by a certain angle so let's say theta is here 90 degrees so that is what we have specified a quarter turn so for i the vector is um, just rotated by 0 by 90 so no rotation for love we are rotating it 1 by 90 which means quarter turn for u we are rotating this dial by 180 degree by multiplying 90 by 2 which is half turn for example if you want to keep a smaller theta value so instead of using 90 you will use 45 again for the i no rotation because we are multiplying it by 0 but love we are multiplying it by 1 so only smaller rotation but if you, you multiply it by 2 there will be a quarter turn so by adjusting theta we are changing how much the vector is rotated for each position for which affects how the model understands the relationship between the words in a sequence so that's primarily rope theta in action so think of it uh, context length like a spotlight shining on a sequence of word the spotlight can be narrow short context length or wide long cut context length the so rope theta adjusts how much the spotlight moves when it encounters a new word small theta small spotlight move large theta large spotlight move so short context on uh, short context mean only nearby words are considered long context length far away words are also uh, considered so now we understand what exactly context length is what is positional encoding what is rotary positional encoding and then what is rope theta now let me show you a pseudo code where we will be adjusting a rope theta of an existing model remember this is just a pseudo code you there are a lot of other things involved in terms of um, hyperparameter tuning and few other things but this is just to explain what is happening so first we are just importing the torch pytorch library 
then we are defining our rope layer by just calling a rotary position embedding function dimension is 128 here we are just adjusting theta to 0 0.025 so we are here what we are trying to do we are increasing the model's context length from original 8k to say 160k context uh, context length and for 160k we would need the theta of 0 0.025 so we have just created a list thetas with 0 0.025 and then we are looping through this theta you can have multiple thetas by the way so that you could test which theta is the better so for example we have just specified it 0 0.025 then we have assigned this row player the theta value which is 0 0.025 and now we have to train this model on our data set with this theta and then when the model is done training then we will evaluate the model's performance if it is still good enough on 160kk uh, we'll just use it or if it just simply is not good enough it is having some lost in the middle or needle in the haystack problem something like that then we would reduce that uh, theta value or context length and then we will try it again so this is quite an iterative process where you check the performance of the model and then try to see how much you can extend And for instance, if I take you back to that gradient page where they have increased the context length from 8K to 262K, if you read through this model card, and I will drop the link in video's description, you will see that they have extended it by using this rope theta, as we just know. And this is their progressive training detail. So rope theta, 65K, something like that, 15.3 million, and then this. And then there is a lot of other detail. Similarly, this guy also has given uh, how it pre-trained it. A very, very good rate. I would highly suggest you read through it. It's quite interesting as how they have done it, how much time it has taken and the resources and all that stuff. So it's not a cheap process. You can't do it at home. You would need a good, good, powerful uh, GPUs, multiple GPUs and a lot of stuff for it. So that's it. I hope this was useful. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. Again, I have to uh, say that this is just for the understanding of us mere mortals. Um, we are not some mega machine learning engineers and we are not some mathematicians. But for the understanding as how exactly this is working is very important at this high level. Because not everyone us, uh, of us would be doing this, but at least we should know what is happening in order to better use it, in order to better understand it. If you want to add anything, if you are already doing it, please share your learning and experiences. And if I have um, missed anything, feel free to point it out. It's shared learning. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, then please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.